ஜோதிஸ்மிருதிபுராணம் கருணாலயம் நமாமி பகவத்பாத சங்கரம் உபசங்கரம் சதாசிபகமாரம்பாம் சங்கராச்சாரியமஞ்சமாம் அஸ்மதாச்சாரியபந்தாம் வந்தே குரு பரம்பராம் அருணாம் கருணாதரங்கிதாட்சீம் ஹிருதபாஷாம் குத புஷ்பானாபாம் மணிமாதிராவிருத்தாம் மயூகி அஹமித்யேவிபாவேவாணிஸ்டாண்ட்ரணாமம் We are now on Shoka number 51. Namaskar. Dushta dura dura chad samani dosha varjita Sarvajna sandra karuna samana dhika varjita Dushtadura. Dushtadura means evil characters are kept at a distance. They cannot reach Devi. Devi is beyond the reach of the person knows everything other fellow knows doesn't know anything other fellow knows only shastra this fellow knows something beyond shastra this kind of argument or pointing out differences between various shastras and not understanding the right import putarka comes in several forms so we have to be very careful when dealing with such people we will also be led by the, the problem is we will also be misled by this putarka that is what he is trying to emphasize that such people can only busy themselves with argumentation they can never reach they me duracharya samani this follows the previous one devi puts down samani puts down evil conduct now evil conduct means not performing activities prescribed by shastra and performing activities proscribed by shastra prohibited by shastra now whatever sins we have committed in this manner will all be we will be redeemed of all those sins if we take shelter in devi's feet now this is nicely mentioned then the kalashruti adhyaya of lalita sahasrama himself nitya karma ananushthanate nishiddha karana dapi nitya karma ananushthanate whatever is supposed to be done we have not done nishiddha karana dapi whatever is prohibited we have done yat papam jayate pumsa tat sarvam nashyate dhruvam whatever sin has accumulated that will get destroyed with devi's grace as they said earlier this is not a license to go on incurring sins it's not license that this is a license for repenting for whatever sins we have committed knowingly or unknowingly and taking refuge in devi's feet 
This is following uh, similar descriptions which we have seen before. Shada, Dvesha, etc. Prodha, etc. They, 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 they are not to be found in Devi. So they are the doshas, deficiencies or defects, which are common in us, in Jeevas. So she is not having a Sarvajna. Sarvajna means what? Knowing one who knows everything. Naturally, when there is nothing other than Devi to be known, when there is nothing other than Paramatma to be known, everything else has emanated from Paramatma. The world has emanated from Paramatma. All the mundane knowledge has emanated from her. Vedas have emanated from her. Shastras have emanated from her. Everything has emanated from her. When, what is it that she doesn't know? What is it that is beyond the ken of her knowledge? Nothing. So, Sarvajna. Sandra Karuna. Sandra means excessive, extraordinarily high. So, possessing compassion of a very extraordinarily high degree. Samana Adhika Varjita. We saw Nistula last time. That means one who has no parallel. Now here, parallel is Samana. Adhika means one who excels. So she, Devi does not have anyone who is parallel to her, who is equal to her, or who excels her. There is nobody who equals her, there is nobody who can excel her. This is something which is normally found in many Ashtotra, Satanama Sotra, and Sahasranam Sotra, Samana Adhika Varjita. This is to, en to enable us to develop greater and greater bhakti. If we know that she is the only one, she is the Sarvajna, she is the Tantra Karuna, she is the Samana Adhika Varjita. So these three qualities are something which uh, are going to guide us in developing in deepening our bhakti. That is why they, are, they have been put together. Sarva Shakti Mahi, Sarva Mangala, Sajjati Prata, Sarva Shakti Mahi. She possesses all the power which one can think of. Any power which you think, just as we said, any knowledge which you can think of, Sarva Jnana. Similarly, any power which you can think of, any power that is there present in her, she possesses all those powers. This is a normal meaning. Another meaning is all those aspects of Shakti, all those manifestations of Shakti, like he is giving an example of Bala, Thagala, etc. He says, Dashamaha Vidya, we say, Navadurga, we say, Brahmi, etc. Brahmi, Maheshwari, etc. Kapta Matrikas, we say, so, all those are aspects of one and only Devi. They are no different from Devi. So, fields of, the, of those forms, Sarva Shakti Mahi, this is another meaning. All the Shaktis of all the Devatas, because Devatas are, whenever we think of Shakti, we remember Devatas. Agni, who can equal Agni in terms of power of burning? Who can equal Vayu in terms of power of making things move? in shifting things, in uprooting things. Similarly, every Devata has got some extraordinary power beyond our imagination. So Shakti we always associate with Devata. In fact, we pray to Devata, we offer oblations to Devata for acquiring some of the power which we need during our mundane life. But who is Giving them those shaktis. Devi is giving them those shaktis. This is mentioned in the Purana. Madhiya shakti le chaye tattad deva sharira kaha madhiya ha shakti le chaha They are a small, insignificant part of my shakti. Devi says, Sambhu yate mama bhuvan rupam paramashohanam They took their form from me. Their form is also from me. Ayudhani kadevanam yani yani tureshkara machanda yattada karaha ayudhani tadabhavanna. Even the weapons which they have, forget the shakti, forget the forms, rupa. 
even the weapons that they have all with us even they or my own form much chanda chanda much shakta yakada karaha they are also from my shakti much shakta yakada karaha ayudhani tada bhavanna so sarva shakti me sarva of course means that whatever we can think of encompassing everything now we, there, there will be many shaktis which are beyond our imagination which we cannot even understand even if somebody explains to us and there are many things which have been left unexplained everything cannot be explained everything cannot be told in shastra so this term sarva includes all of that sarva mangala similarly all auspiciousness all auspiciousness anything which you can imagine anything was perfect if you can imagine has come from her devi puranam defines it beautifully what is sarva mangala there is a definition sarvani hridaya sthani mangalani subhani cha ipsitani tatha tatha ji iti tena sa sarva mangala ipsitani dadati iti tena sa sarva mangala ipsitane dadati iti whatever you think of whatever auspicious you think of and whatever you want if sitani they will all be granted by devi kena sa sarva mangala that is why she is known as sarva mangala sarvani hridaya sthani mangalani subhani ke whatever auspiciousness you can think of from your heart shobhanani ja shreshthani या देवी ददते हरे भक्तानी सर्वंगलास्पिशियमंगलास्पिशियमंगलास्पिशियमंगलास्पिशियमंगलास्पिशियमंगलास्पिशियमंगलास्पिशियमंगलास्पिशियमंगलास्पिशियमंगलास्प
even the wildest person, even the most evil person, can aspire for her compassion once he takes the path of reform because she is Sarveshwari. She is not the history of only virtuous people. Sarvamayi, again, she is the, in the form of everything because everything has come from her. What we consider as wife, what we consider as adharma also has come from her only. Otherwise, how, how, how did it find a place in our scheme of things? And why it has come, there are many theories for that. Let us not go into that. But Shastra says clearly, there is dharma, there is a dharma, you follow dharma. So there is a dharma, Shastra accepts. But a dharma also is a part of David's being. So that is why Sarva Mahi, she encompasses everything, she is all pervading. There are 36 tattvas in Kashmir, Shaivitam and in Shaktam, starting from earth up to Shiva, 36 tattvas, which includes, of course, uh, Panchabhuta, Panchatanmatra, Panchakarmendriya, Panchayanendriya, etc., etc. There are so many other tattvas are added to them, pertaining to Shiva, pertaining to this power, etc., etc. Now, they they total to 36. Now, it is Devi who pervades all those 36 tattvas. This is another indirect reference. The commentator gives this. Sarva Mayi. It is Shiva is Avani Paryan. Come, starting from Shiva up to Bhumi. Bhumi is the first tattva in the, in the Prince of Bhutas. Then the last tattva is Shiva. So all the tattvas or pervaded by her. Sarva Mantras Parupini. There are seven crores of mantras according to our Shastras. Paktakoti Mahamantraha. They are known as Mahamantras. Other than Mahamantra, there are ordinary mantras which are many. Certain mantras are categorized as Mahamantra. They are themselves seven crores in number. Now, she is of the, all those forms, all the forms of mantras. And uh, there are some paths known as adhvas, which we will see later on. There are six adhvas, six paths. And one of those paths is mantra adhva. That means, that means reaching Devi by various means. One of the means is mantra, naturally. By simply chanting her mantra, you can reach her. So, Sarva Mantra Swarupini. This is followed by Sarva Yantra, Sarva Tantra. In the next shloka, we will go to them. So, we, here we have in these two shlokas various qualities of Devi, characteristics of Devi, which show us that she comes down to the lowest level the lowest level of Jiva. She gives salvation to virtuous people. Well, that, that is no something which we, we need not worry about. It's not something which is going to help us. See, there is no one who is beyond the ken of her compassion. This is what this is the substance of what we have been seeing in this so far. Dushta dura dura achara shamani dosha vajjita sarva jnathandra karuna samana adhika vajjita sarva shakti mahi sarva mangala sadyati prada sarveshwari sarva mahi sarva mantra sparopini sarva yantra atmika sarva tantra rupa manuanmani maheshwari mahadevi Mahalakshmi Rimrida Priya, Maharupa, Mahapuja, Mahapatakana Shini, Mahamaya, Mahasatva, Mahashaktir, Maharati. Sarva Yantra Atmika. See, there are three uh, aspects in Devi Puja. One is Mantra, another is Yantra, another is Tantra. All the three are there in Sri Chakra Puja. You have Mantra, you have Yantra, which is the Sri Chakra itself, 
and tantra tantra uh, can mean many things we will come to that we will first go through sarva yantratmika there are many yantras associated with devi shri chakra is one of the yantra if you take uh, durga saptashati book they will show you saptashati yantra similarly there are many other yantras for devi in fact even in saundarya lahari for each of the shlokas they have given a yantra each of the shlokas so 100 shlokas mean 100 yantras are there so they are all there for obtaining the grace of devi in that particular form for a particular uh, wish for fulfilling a particular wish so the devi says that if you use this yantra if you do this puja if you do this particular nivedya if you chant this mantra so many times you will get this fruit so they are all yantra they are all blessed by devi they are all indicative of the presence of devi sarva yantra smita sarva tantra roopa ये तंत्र नॉर्मली मींस देयर आर मेनी शाक्त तंत्र लाइक देयर आर 28 शैव आगमास शिव आगमास देयर आर 28 फेमस शिव आगमास देयर आर ए फ्यू विष्णु आगमास पांचरात्र एक्सेट्रा सिमिलरली वैखानस एक्सेट्रा सिमिलरली शाक्त तंत्र व्हेन इट कम्स टू शाक्त देयर आर नोन एज तंत्र what was known as agama for shiva and vishnu or now known as tantras when it comes to devi and all the tantras have been taught by shiva to parvati any tantra is open so there are many many tantra lakshmi tantra kaatyayini tantra kali tantra etc etc now all those tantras are several forms of one and the same devi lalita parameshwari sarva tantra roopa and all the tantra take you to the same devi and that is mentioned beautifully in this shloka bahuda kyagamehi binnaha pantsanaha siddhihe tavaha bahuda api agamehi binnaha so there are many agamas pantsanaha siddhihe tavaha many paths which take you towards attaining devi vaye va dipakante te मनोन्मणिस्टैंडिंग unmanam is going beyond taking the mind upwards which is always means taking upwards so unmanam is taking the mind upwards and manonmani means one who takes your mind upward and merges it with the atma in the heart and in the process the mind is destroyed mind presence is not there mind loses its presence and merges with atma that is the unmana state that is the unmana state that is the state to which they we will lead you provided we show enough devotion of course this is a basic explanation there are very technical explanations If you do this, if you do this uh, mudra, if you do this puja, you will go into manomani state, etc., etc. In fact, there is a special mudra which is called manomani mudra. If you follow the the path of that mudra, you will reach this manomani state. It says, so in that state, dhyana, jastra, dhyaya, this triputi, the difference between the three. the process of meditation the meditator and the object of meditation all the three merge together three do not exist only one exists that is the object of meditation that is devi so that is the mano unmani state to which you are being taken by various paths by the grace of devi and that is where she is known as mano unmani because she grants you that state when you take that route 
Now, it can also mean in the Pancham Brahma Mantra, the Parameshwara, we say, Vama Deva, Yanama, Gesta, Yanama, Shesta, Yanama, Rudra, Yanama, Kala, Yanama, Kalavita, Balavitarana, Yanama, Bala, Yanamo, Bala, Pramatana, Yanama, Sarva, Buddha, Damana, Yanama, Manon, Mana, Yanama, it ends with Manon. Eleven names are there in this mantra, starting with Vama Deva and ending with Manon, Mana. So there also, it, the meaning is the same, Manon, Mana. Manon mana when it is male, manon mani when it is female. So manon mani is the consort of manon mana, consort of Shiva. That is also a possible meaning because Veda Mantra describes Shiva as manon mana in this mantra. Then Maheshwari, Maheshwara's consort, Parameshwara's consort. Now here the commentator is beautifully referring to a common mantra which we all chant during mantra pushpa offering yo veda ado sura prokto vedante chat pratishtita ha tasya prakriti nasya yaparasa maheshwara ha vitesh so what does this mean who is maheshwara this mantra defines the Swara, which is at the beginning of Veda, which is Om, Omkara. And Vedantecha Pratishthitaha, the, the, the entity which is established by Vedanta, that is also Om. Starting point is Om, ending point is Om, ending point is Paramatma, starting point was beginning of Veda. Ending point, though you end with Om, it is Paramatma. Vedanta is a Pratishthitaha. One who is established by Vedanta. Who is that? Paramatma. That's a Prakriti Yeah. So he is beyond Prakriti. He is beyond creation. Prakriti normally should mean creation. So he is beyond creation. So creation comes and goes. Parameshwara is ever existent. So Prakriti is a paraha. So he is beyond Prakriti, he is beyond the creation. He is the one who is praised in the form of Omkara at the beginning of Veda. And he is praised as the final destination to be reached at the close of Vedanta. Vedanta is a Satishthitaha. So he is defined as Maheshwara. So he is the consort of that Maheshwara. And she possesses the same characteristic, same description which we saw just now. That is, beyond the three gunas, sattvaraja, tamas, which are associated with creation, etc., etc. Of course, the other normal meaning is Maheshwara means he is the Ishwara for everyone. There is no one equal to or above him. Maheshwara, so Maheshwari, Maheshwari. Mahadevi. Maha, Mahati Devi. Mahati means one who cannot be measured. This is the direct uh, dictionary meaning. What is Maha? What is Mahati? Something which cannot be measured, immeasurable, immeasurably large. Then only it is called Mahati. Whether it is a form, whether it is something, a glory or anything. Brihadasya Shari Ramyati Aprameyam Pramanataha Devi Prana says that because her form, her sharira is so large, cannot be measured. Means what? The entire creation is her body. Datur Maheti Pujyam Mahadevi Tatastrata. And also Mahadeva's concert because Shiva is known as Mahadeva. That is another. Mahalakshmi. Now she is in the form of Lakshmi, who is the consort of Vishnu. Vishnu, uh, Lakshmi and uh, Saraswati are the forms of Jalita Parameshwari. We have seen it before. So there is one aspect. Another aspect is Devi herself is being called Mahalakshmi in many places in Shastra. While referring to Lalita Parameshwari, they use the term Mahalakshmi. Not only Vishnu's concert Mahalakshmi, Rita Parameshwari herself is being called Mahalakshmi in several places in Chakras. Hmm. 
சிவபுராணம் சேர்த்து சசியாங்க மண்டலாரோடா சக்திர் மாஹேஸ்வரி பரா மகாலட்சுமேரி தீட்சாதா ஷியாமா சர்வ மனோஹரி then he talks about shiva then he says about that shiva's shakti is maheshwari and she is known as mahalakshmi mahalakshmi hi iti khata and even veda mantra in ayushya suktam you find shriyam lakshmi ambikam avalangam he is calling it calling devi as shri lakshmi ambika avalanga so there also lakshmi comes shri comes so mahalakshmi then we have mrida priya one who is very much liked by mrida mrida is the name of shiva that means who becomes easily pleased easily delighted very compassionate very happy that is the meaning of mrida mrida ka the term comes frequently in rudra mantra as all of us know sri rudram refers to the word mrida frequently so shiva priya mrida priya maharupa because whatever rupa you think of the world the the universe aneka kodi brahmanda we say several crores of brahmanda all of them are her form she is only one and we are talking about aneka kodi brahmanda so naturally maharupa because that's no we say maha means something which cannot be measured when we say aneka kodi brahmanda that means you will not know exactly how many kodis are there it is something which is beyond count countless mahapujya same who used to be worshipped pujya and she is great there is no one equal to her because she is being worshipped even by brahma vishnu shiva kubera and other devatas mahapataka nashini she can destroy even the greatest of sins like brahma hatya etc pancha mahapataka we saw that the five great sins like brahma hatya etc surapan brahma hatya stealing guru talpa gamana and fifth is associating with one who is committing the four that is the worst part if you simply associate yourself with one who commits the four great sins that is the first pataka you have committed a pataka equivalent to the four so now coming to maha pataka these are known as pancha maha pataka there are ati pataka sama pataka etc if you see the sankalpa in avaniya vittam upakarma at that time you will find a very long mahasankalpa at that time towards the end all these patakas are listed pancha mahapataka are listed sama pataka are listed etc upapataka are listed etc samapatakas are equivalent to mahapataka then upapataka is slightly lower level and so on now she destroyed even the mahapataka no not to say about other pataka the very thought of devi feet is enough to destroy all your pataka so says chakra ியூட்டிஃபுல்லி to show the glory of devi's feet in the palashruti he says devi was says now we are going through thousand names of lalita devi isn't it he says that one nama out of this thousand is enough not only to destroy all your sins you cannot commit a sin which cannot be destroyed by that nama he says that means whatever sin you commit however great you think you have committed that is too small for 
destruction by the power of one nama beautifully he said atre eka namno ya shakti hi pakagana am nivartane eka namno ya shakti hi for one nama whatever shakti this is high grave statement tan nivartyam agam kartum nalam loka chaturdasha it is not possible for you to commit that kind of sin in all the 14 worlds nalam loka chaturdasha even if you destroy all the 14 lokas you have not committed the sin of that magnitude which can be destroyed by one nama of that magnitude is far greater than that look at the the way the power has been mentioned to us mahapatha nashini mahamaya mahamaya great power of delusion the maya which we go through is maya ya ma something which does not exist that is why it is delusion that is why it is called maya that is we are all subject to that but mahamaya is maya of such a great magnitude that the entire creation is subject to that maya if we are subject to our level of maya everyone is there may be another person who might have crossed a little higher down to a little higher level so he will not be subject to the kind of maya which i am subject to but he but he will also subject to different kind of maya so this kind of variations exist among creation created beings but who has created all this maya that is mahamaya jnani naam api kesam si devi bhagavati hi sa balat akrishya mohaya mahamaya prayachati this is all durga satyakriti mahamaya devi herself is known as mahamaya she takes you by force balat akrishya mohaya and takes you to towards delusion So we have to be careful. Maha Tattva. Tattva has got several meanings depending on the circumstance. Now here it depending on the context. Now here it can mean quality. It can mean strength. It can just mean existence, being Tattva, existing. So all these are attributable to Devi of very large magnitude. Maha Tattva. that is immeasurably good quality immeasurable strength immeasurable beyond imagination her existence how can you imagine her existence we, we are not able to imagine the existence of himalaya can we do you know the extent of himalaya so how can we imagine the existence of devi so maha tattva maha shakti hi by the way same reasoning her power or something which we cannot imagine she creates she destroys she sustains the entire universe the entire growth of brahmanda shakti also can mean uh, depending on the context strength not only power it can also mean strength it can also mean weapon but whatever meaning you take all that applies equally to her maha rati hi rati means bliss ananda the greatest ananda is provided by her only to jnani jnani enjoy the greatest bliss provided by her all the sukha which we think is happiness mundane happiness is nothing in comparison with that so maharati hi so here we have seen how she is of the form of mantra yantra and tantra which we use in our puja and the final destination is herself and we have to go using our mind but mind has to be destroyed mind is the tool which will has to be destroyed like the ladder which has to be kicked off when you go to the upper floor this is the useful example given in shastra like that manas is required shastra is required puja is required everything is required there are all tools but they, they don't have any use Once we have gone to the higher level, manon mani. So similarly, we have other names which uh, show the extent of our power and extent of our compassion, extent of our delusion, power of delusion, and extent of the bliss. That is the most important extent of the bliss. Sarva yantra atmika sarva tantra rupa manon mani maheshwari mahadevi mahalakshmi mridapriya 
ಮಹಾರೂಪ ಮಹಾಪೂಜ್ಯ ಮಹಾಪಾತಕನಾಶಿನಿ ಮಹಾಮಾಯ ಮಹಾತತ್ವ ಮಹಾಶಕ್ತಿ ಮಹಾರತಿ ಮಹಾಭೋಗ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ್ಯ ಮಹಾವೀರ್ಯ ಮಹಾಬಲ ಮಹಾಬುದ್ಧಿರ್ ಮಹಾಸಿದ್ಧಿರ್ ಮಹಾಯೋಗೇಶ್ವರೇಶ್ವರಿ ಮಹಾತಂತ್ರ ಮಹಾಮಂತ್ರ ಮಹಾಯಂತ್ರ ಮಹಾಸನ ಮಹಾಯಾಗ ಕ್ರಮಾರಾಧ್ಯ ಮಹಾಭೈರವ ಪೂಜಿತ ಮಹಾಭೋಗ ಆಭೋಗ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ವೇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ವೇಸ್ ಮಹಾ ಆಭೋಗ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಹಾಭೋಗ ಆಭೋಗ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಫರ್ all pervading quality extends everywhere you cannot say our all pervading quality does not extend due to this particular place there is no place that is why maha abhoga all pervading having extension in all direction fullness also it can include variety multifariousness etc etc all that is covered by abhoga if you say maha bhoga bhoga means pleasures all the things which we consider as pleasures, Devaloka is full of pleasures, we are saying. Now all those bhogas are given by Devi or her grace only, Maha Bhoga. Maha Aishwarya. Aishwarya or Vibhuti is actually glory. It is interpreted as wealth normally because that is something which normally human beings speak. so normally human beings speak well so aishwarya but actually aishwarya means much more than well aishwarya is overlordship aishwarya is glory aishwarya is tejas everything comes under aishwarya maha aishwarya because all aishwarya comes from her maha virya all virya comes from her virya means uh, prabhava tejas that is being effective exercising your power that is virya you may have power but you may not be able to exercise it at the time of exercising something prevents you this is a common experience for human being you have the power but you cannot do it why because you don't have virya virya is something which expresses the power also it can include tejas it can include samarthya etc that is all coming under maha virya maha bala bala is the strength you have to have the strength then only you can exercise virya virya can come only when you have bala strength now balam also has other meanings like smaller meanings like smell like taste like form atma etc so these various meanings are given depending on the content, but all of them are part of her glory. Maha buddhi hi, maha tiddhi hi, maha buddhi hi. An intellect which cannot be imagined, beyond imagination. Isn't it? Even among uh, human beings, if we find somebody uh, with uh, very sharp intellect, we say, hey, that's a low. This intellect, uh, we cannot understand. with arguments. We say like that. In fact, it used to be said about Swami Vivekananda that during train journey of a two or three hour journey, he used to carry with him a whole load of books, from 20 books, a pile of books, and he used to read all of them, not the way we read a novel, no. He understands, he grasps all the words, all the matter, which is contained in those books. That is intellect of that capacity. So we, this is the intellect of an ordinary human being. What about her intellect? Which has created all the world, sustains all the world, and destroys all the world. That is why Maha Buddhi Ki. Maha Siddhi Ki. Great attainment. There is nothing to be attained by her. She is the one 
who is to be attained by us. So she is Siddhi. Siddhi here means to be attained. Attainment. All the Ashtamaha Siddhi we have seen earlier, Anima, Mahima, etc. They are all her part of her glory, her compassion. She grants those Siddhi to deserving people when needed. So that is why she is known as Maha Siddhi because they are known as Ashta Maha Siddhi. Maha Yogeshwareshwari. Yogeshwara is one who has mastered yoga. Yoga is a Yishwara. So he doesn't have to make efforts to go to Samadhi level. Then only he can be called the Yogeshwara. Because what is the, the, the final state of yoga? Samadhi. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, while talking to people in, a, in the midst of a devotee crowd, while talking, while making jokes, while listening to a song, suddenly he will go into Samadhi with, with no indication, no prior indication. And he will remain in the Samadhi for two days, three days, etc. We know that. So, that is Yogeshwara, because Samadhi is at his beck and call. He doesn't have to work for Samadhi, he make efforts for Samadhi. He wanted Samadhi, he got into it. So that is Yogeshwara. And she is the Ishwari of all Yogeshwaras. There may be many Yogeshwaras of different levels. All Yogeshwaras may not be of the same level. We, it is difficult for us to understand. But she is the Ishwari of all those Yogeshwaras. Maha Tantra, Maha Mantra, Maha Yantra. We have seen just now Tantra, Mantra, and Yantra. Now, here, what is Maha Tantra? What is Maha Mantra? He is giving some examples. Why this name is coming again it has to be justified by giving examples of what are Maha Mantras, what are Maha Yantras, and what are Maha Tantras. Now, coming to Tantras, he says, Kularnavam, Jnanarnavam, these are known as Mahatantras. All are Mahatantras, but he is giving some examples. What is the Mahatantra? A Tantra Shastra which tells you the glory of Devi and also teaches you how to attain her, various means of atta attaining her. That is Mahatantra. He is giving some examples. Similarly, Mantra, there are Pancha Shakti Mantra, Kauda Shakti Mantra, Under Bala Mantra, Bhagada Mantra, etc. They are all Maha Mantras. She is of the form of Maha Tantra, she is the form of Maha Mantra, she is of the form of Maha Yantras, like the Sri Chakra. Like, there are other Yantras like Padma Chakra, Amrita Ghatta, Meru, Meru, Lingam, even Shivalinga, the other form of Yantra. Actually, when we talk about, <clears throat> here the commentator explains very nicely. When we talk about Mahasantra, Mahamantra, Mahayantra, Sri Vidya is the Mahamantra. Uh, in a, there are many mantras, so seven, seven crores of Mahamantra. Now, which one is the greatest of them? Toda Shakshadi, Panchada Shakshadi mantra or known as Sri Vidya mantra, and they are the Mahamantra. Commentator explains, quoting Shastra. Similarly, Mahayantra is obviously Sri Chakra, in which you do the Sri Vidya Puja. So, Sri Vidya is the one which is common to Mahasantra, Mahamantra, Mahayantra. Sri Chakra is the Yantra. Sri Vidya Mantra is the Mahamantra. And Mahatantra is the Sri Vidya Jnana. That that Vidya is Tantra, Mahatantra. Now, uh, the commentator is nicely giving the reference to Saundarya Lavari. There, Adi Shankara says, Parvati forced Parameshwara to come out with this Sri Vidya. It was being hidden by. Shankara, Shiva. 
Shiva brought out 64 tantras. 64 tantras. 28 tantras are commonly being spoken about, but there are many more. So he is talking about 64 tantras, but all of them are very nominal. So under the compulsion of Devi, Shiva finally brought out this Sri Vidyaman tantra. That is why he is calling it as Patantra, because that is the one which will take you to Shiva, to your own truth. To your own truth. The only tantra which will take you to your own truth, self knowledge, is Sri Vidya. Tatu Shastya Tantraihi Sakalamadhi Randhaya Bhavanam Tira Tatta Siddhi Pratava Paratantraha Pasupati Punaswan Nirbandhate Punahatwan Nirbandhate Because of the pressure brought by Devi. Ahila Purusha Arthaita Dhatana Satantram De Tantram Shititalam Avati Taradidam Avati Taradidam This Sri Vidya Tantra he brought down to the earth avati e tantram this is your tantra and this is known as patantra so so these are the references here maha tantra maha mantra maha yantra mahasana one who has a seat which is very large what is the large seat that is why we refer to 36 tattvas starting from Bhumi up to Shiva. Now all the tattvas are regarded as her feet because they are they are there. They are the manifestations of Devi because none of these exist without her grace. The Bhumi cannot exist. The Vayu cannot exist. The space cannot exist. So they are all known as her feet. Yesha Bhagavati Sarva Tatvan Yashritya Tishthati Bhagavati is seated in all these Tatvas. Tatvan Yashritya Tishthati. This is what Devi Bhagavati. Maha Yaga Krama Rajya, one who is worshipped by the procedure of Maha Yaga. Maha Yaga Krama Rajya. That means there is something called Maha Yaga. Now, the the yaga performed by Devendra, the Chidagni Kunda Sambhuta we saw, that in that Chidagni Kunda, whatever yaga was performed by Devendra is known as Mahayaga, because that is where Devi herself manifested in that Agni, isn't it? So what, what yaga can be greater than that? So that is Mahayaga. The procedure which Devendra adopted is Mahayaga Krama. The other meaning is there is an Upanishad called Bhavana Upanishad. We referred to it earlier. There is no external puja, no Sri Chakra, no nothing external. Everything is mental. Everything is Bhavana. Is Sarira itself is Sri Chakra and so on. Now, that procedure, if you follow, the procedure enshrined in Bhavana Upanishad, that is known as Mahayaga Krama. That is another meaning given to this Mahayaga Krama Aradhya, the procedure enshrined in Bhavana Upanishad. Maha <coughs> Bhairava Pujita, worshipped by Maha Bhairava. What is Bhairava? Bhairava is a form of Shiva, we all know. Now why the name specially comes for Bhairava here instead of Shiva? He says the reason name Bhairava is a name, name itself includes Krishti, Siti, Samhara. He beautifully he explains that. Ba, Ra, and Va. Ba includes, means Bharanam, that is Srishti. Ra means Ramanam, that is Siti. Va means Vamanam. Vamanam actually means vomiting, that is Samhara. So Parameshwara is known as Bhairava. Because he does all these three, he does five actually. The three are important starting points. So, Shambhu Pure Yate Devi Mantra Shakti Mahim Subham Akshamalam Kare Kratva Nyate Naiva Bhagod Bhavaha. How Shambhu 
ವರ್ಷಸ್ ದೇವಿ ಈಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಪದ್ಮ ಪುರಾಣ ಕಂಬುಹು ಪೂಜೆಯತೆ ದೇವಿ ಸೊ ಮಹಾ ಭೈರವ ಪೂಜಿತ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ವರ್ಡ್ಸಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇವಿ which will help us in our meditation these are going to help us in our meditation and puja that kind of those kind of names have been grouped together mahabhoga maheshwarya mahavirya mahabala mahabuddhir mahasiddhir mahayogeshwareshwari mahatantra mahamantra mahayantra mahatana mahayagat pramaradhya mahabhairava pujita ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾಕಲ್ಪ ಮಹಾತಾಂಡವ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಣಿ ಮಹಾಕಾಮೇಶ ಮಹಿಷಿ ಮಹಾತ್ರಿಪುರ ಸುಂದರಿ ಚತುಷ್ಟಿಪಚಾರಾಢ್ಯ ಚತುಷ್ಟಿ ಕಲಾಮಯಿ ಮಹಾ ಚತುಷ್ಟಿ ಕೋಟಿ ಯೋಗಿನಿ ಗಣಸೇವಿತ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾಕಲ್ಪ ಮಹಾತಾಂಡವ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಣಿ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಏ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರ ಏನು ಮಹಾಕಲ್ಪ ಏಸ್ the final destruction that is destruction takes place in several stages many living beings meet their death every day isn't it every day there is death happening that is the first level of destruction then there is a greater level of destruction when brahma goes to sleep after 1000 chatur yuga that is his day time then his night time is 1000 chatur yuga so at the end of his day time which is 1000 chatur yuga he goes to sleep at that time what he does he destroys up to suvar loka go loka bhavar loka suvar loka all the three levels of loka so destroyed that is the what is known as primary destruction now the mahakalpa is final destruction when brahma's life is also over his 100 years or 100 years or over he himself merges with devi vishnu also merges with devi all the creation is completely destroyed and there is mahapralaya that mahapralaya is mahakalpa so at that time shiva and devi are only the two entities who survive so at that time shiva performs what is known as maha tandava he performs tandava every day every day during sandhya ka we have seen it before during pradosh ka he performs tandava sandhya tandava he is very he is very happy to do he takes delight in doing that so that is ordinary every day tandava this maha tandava is the tandava which he performs continuously for a long long time till the next creation starts mind you till the next creation starts he keeps performing this maha tandava at the time of maha pralaya so maheshwara maha kalpa during the maha pralaya maha tandava whatever he performs who is the witness for that sakshini the witness is devi she is the only witness who witnesses this maha pralaya tandava panchadashi tavam it was beautifully described this kalpo patam harana kalpita tandavasya devasya khanda parashoho parabhairavasya kalpo patam harana kalpita tandavasya what we saw just now ಪಾಶಾಂಕುಶೈಕ್ಷವಸರಾತನ ಪುಷ್ಪಣೈ ಸಾ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಣಿ ವಿಜಯತೆ ತವ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ರೇಖಾ ಸಾ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಣಿ ವಿಜಯತೆ ತವ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಏಕಾ ಯುವರ್ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಶಾಂಕುಶೈಕ್ಷವಸರಾತನ ಪುಷ್ಪಣೈ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಲಲಿತಾ ದೇವಿ ಇಸ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಶ ಅಂಕುಶ ಚಿಕ್ಷುಚಾಪ and pushpavan so she is the sakshini 
மகாகாமேஷ மகிஷி இஸ் தான்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் மகாகாமேஸ்வரா இஸ் நோன் ஏ காமேஸ்வரி மகாகாமேஸ்வரி இஸ் தான்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் பட்டமகிஷி எஸ் தேசே பட்டமகிஷி இஸ் தான்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் தி கிங் தி சக்கரவர்த்தி மகா திரிபுர சுந்தரி தி டர்ம் திரிபுரா He is going to come again at that time. He is going to tell us more. Now here, what we have to understand is whatever this we have seen before also. Whatever is in the form of three, whatever is in the form of three, sattva, rajas, tamas, the entire creation is made of these three gunas, and she is beyond the three gunas. Guna tita, they are saying. Similarly, the waking state, the dream state, and the sleeping state. we go through these three states ordinary jiva we don't know the fourth state the fourth state is the samadhi state the jnana state that is her state so all these are known as tripura the three towns the three cities they are known as city uh, as a as a way of alluding to the various activities that take place in the city that is within sattva various activities take place within rajas various activities take place very within tamas various activities take place within waking state various activities take place dream state various activities take place sleeping state also various activities take place in the body etc involuntarily so they are known as cities in this indicative format so tripura the three cities Mahatripura Sundari, she is the Sundari who is in charge of, who controls this Tripura. She is, so she is known as Tripura. Her name is also Tripura because she controls this. And she is Maha, she is Tripura, she is also Sundari. Three names together form one name here. She is so beautiful, she is Sundari. She is in charge of the three cities, so Tripura, she is of the form of those three cities not only in charge so three cities don't exist without her everywhere she pervades no then she is maha because that you cannot find another parallel to this isn't it how can you find another parallel to the three guna three three states etc so she is maha and parallel maha tripura sundari i think we stop now time is up and we continue with chaturshakti pitaradhya chaturshakti kalam e etc all that we will take up in the next session so here we have maheshwara maha kalpa maha tandava sakshini maha kamesha mahishi maha tripura sundari so we close the session today with this verses any questions if anybody has any questions please turn please unmute yourself turn on your video and ask questions uh swami can can you hear me hari krishna rinchi uh, guru bin so there is there is a word you mentioned uh, mahalakshmi and then ramaha yogeshwareshwari so maha lakshmi and ramaha yogeshwareshwari so what is the difference between maha and ramaha is there any anything? there is no ramaha i never said ramaha there is only mahalakshmi there is no ra uh, the the ra which you see the ra which you see is because of the sandhi the rules of sanskrit grammar when you split the ra disappears mahalakshmi hi that visarga becomes ra in sandhi it is the matter of grammar it has not no separate meaning mahalakshmi mrida priya for example mahalakshmi hi then mrida priya if you split these are the two words mahalakshmi hi is one word mrida priya is another word in sandhi when the two are joined together it becomes mahalakshmi mrida priya because of sandhi rules of grammar it has no separate significance okay any so, no other question any other questions no more we questions close yeah. we close for the day we meet again next saturday 7 pm ist as usual नम पार्वती पत हर हर महादेवा गोविंद राम संकर्तन गोविंद गोविंद 
ஸ்ரீ லலிதாவரமேஸ்வரியை ஜெய ஜெயா